Hello and welcome to Acoustic RGJ. My name is Roy Johnson. If you are a guitar player who currently uses Tab alone and you want to improve your timing, your understanding and the feel of music that you play, then having an understanding of the music as written on the stave will really help you and therefore this video will be just the video for you. Now don't fly into a panic, I know some people may do as soon as the word music and stave are mentioned, but we're going to look at music from the point of view of timing and we're not even going to worry about learning the note names as they are written on a stave. Now music can be really complicated when it's written down, but we're going to keep things simple. We'll ignore things like multiple voicings and pick up bars, maybe have a look at those in another video later on. Now don't get me wrong, tab is great, it's a bit like painting by numbers for those of you who are old enough to remember that. But it does vary in its degree to convey information to the guitar player. Some tab is actually quite informative, but other forms of tab doesn't convey any sense of timing or the feel of a piece of music. But tab itself is, isn't a new thing. It's been around many years from the Renaissance period, the Baroque period. And originally lute music was written on tab. So um, some fairly sophisticated music has been played and notated using tab itself. One of the reasons that guitar players started using music written on a score was because the demands of the classical guitar particularly, um, and I suppose contemporary music, got more complicated, so more information was needed to help the guitar player um, play the music accurately. Many music books will have the music written on a stave immediately above the tab, but I have noticed that some students of mine, even though they're playing a piece of music which they know orally, They'll look at the tab and they'll read it exactly as written. And if the tab doesn't have any timing markings on it, they will play the piece of music incorrectly as far as timing is concerned, even though the accurate timing can be taken from the music which is written directly above. So the main focus of today's video will be to kind of understand how timing in music is portrayed. And this will help you to A, maybe learn some pieces of music that you have never heard before, but also maybe play the pieces of music that you are familiar with more accurately. One of the first things to think about is the stave itself. The stave is made up of five horizontal lines and on these lines are placed various symbols which indicate um, note durations. A note symbol is a rugby ball shape and it can either be solid black or it can be hollow with or without a tail. The exact shape of the note symbol determines how long a note will last when it's played. And the position on the stave itself will determine whether it's a high pitched note or a low pitched note. The stave can also have indications to help the musician understand how the piece of music should be played in terms of volume. There are things like dynamics which indicate that a, a passage may be played loudly or softly or may be played staccato or pizzicato. There's a huge range of different types of uh, information that can be added to music to help the performer. And by knowing the duration of these notes, it means we can start counting as we play and thereby playing pieces of music more accurately. And counting music is really important, particularly if you want to play uh, in any form of collaboration, whether it be with other musicians or with recorded music. And it also helps you to play pieces, as I said, a lot more accurately. As I said earlier, musical notes have a duration or a value. So think of the value as how long a note rings on for before the next note is played. Now each type of note has a different name. So we're going to begin by thinking about the crotchet. So the crotchet is the basic unit of measure and it lasts for one beat. So a crotchet is a rugby ball shaped blob with a stalk and the stalks can either go up or down. So when you play a crotchet and you count at the same time, a crotchet will sound like this. One, two, three, So each of those notes is known as a beat. And it's kind of important to understand that the crotchet is the, the cornerstone that the other note values are related to. And the relationship between the notes, um, the note values, is, is hierarchical. You can think of a pyramid. So at the top of the pyramid there's going to be a very long, slow note. And as you get down to the base of the pyramid, the notes get faster and faster. Now at the top of the pyramid there's a note called the semi-breve. The semi-brief is a rugby ball shaped note and it doesn't have any stalks or anything attached to it at all. 
and a semi-brief lasts for four beats. Now we know that a beat is a crotchet, so you could also say that a semi-brief lasts for the length of four crotchets. So if I play a semi-brief, it will sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The next level, our level two note, if you like, is called a minim. Now a minim looks like a rugby ball, but this time it's got a stalk attached, and again the stalks can go up or down. Now minim lasts for two beats or two crotchets. So if we play um, a number of minims, they will sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right then, so our third level is the crotchet. We've already seen the crotchet, and we know that crotchet is also known as a beat, which is our fine fundamental kind of cornerstone, if you like, of reading music. And we know that crotchets go one, two, three, four. But let's have a look at the crotchet related to the other two notes that we've seen, which are the minimum and the semi brief So you can see that we have the semi brief which lasts for four beats. One, two, three, four. We then have two minims. Each minim lasts for two beats. One, two, three, four. And then we have the crotchets themselves, which are one beat each. One, two, three, four. The next level down, level four, is the quaver. Now a quaver lasts for half the length of time of a crotchet, so therefore there are two quavers equivalent to one crotchet. You can also think of a quaver as being half a beat, because if a crotchet is one beat and there are two quavers to a crotchet, then a quaver is half a beat. So I'm just going to play some quavers and I'll count them as I play them and I'll follow that with four crotchets so you can understand the difference between them. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. I'll just do that one more time. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Now we can go down several more layers, but I'm going to go down just one more level to level five. Level five is the semiquaver. So the relationship between a semiquaver and a quaver is the same as the relationship between a quaver and a crotchet. So in other words, a semiquaver is worth half length of time of a quaver. Now semiquavers are also known as sixteenth notes because you get sixteen quavers, or sixteen quavers is equivalent to one semibrieve, and they're also known as quarter beats because you get four semiquavers to one crotchet. Now semiquavers are a little bit more complicated to count because basically we're trying to count four subdivisions of one crotchet. So we have this form of counting where you go one e and a, two e and a. And it just helps to break up those, those four elements of those notes. So I'm going to play you some semiquavers followed by four crotchets. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one, two, three, four. I'll play that again, and this time I'll count the crotchets also in one e and a form. One e and a, two e and a, three e. Sometimes when you're reading music you may find you come across some notes that last longer than their kind of designated time span. And there are two ways that you can indicate this. One is by the use of something called a, a dotted rhythm notation and the other is um, by tying notes. So we're going to have a quick look at both of those. To begin with we'll have a look at dotted minims. Now the dot when placed in front of a note increases the length of that note by half. So if we have a minim, a minim is worth two crotchets. So if we increase the length of a minim by a half, then we can kind of add another crotchet to it. 
So a dotted minim will be last will last for three crotchets. So in other words, a minim would last for one, two beats normally, and a crotchet would last for one beat. So a minim is going to be two beats plus one beat, so the whole note is going to last for three beats. One, two, three. In 4-4 four, four time, a minim would again last three beats, but because we've got four beats in a four beat bar, you'd have to fill that bar up with another note. So in the 4-4 four, four example, what we'll have is this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So in that case, we've got a dotted minim, lasts for three beats, followed by a single crotchet. And then in the second bar, we've got a single crotchet and a three beat dotted minim to make a total of four beats. Dotted crotchets are a little bit more difficult to explain. But if we think of a crotchet as being made up of two quavers, we know the dot is going to increase the length of a crotchet by half. So if two quavers equals one crotchet, half a crotchet is going to equal one quaver. So in other words, a dotted crotchet is going to be worth three quavers. You can see this in a 3-8 example, where the eighth note is a quaver, so that tells us how long the beat is. So we're going to count the eighth notes as the beats. In other words, we're going to count one, two, three for our dotted crotchet. But you can think of it as lasting for the time that three quavers would last. Let's have a look at dotted crotchets in a 4-4 time signature. I'll play you this first bar. The first bar in terms of timing is going to go one, two and three, four and. So I'll play that again and this time I'll put in the second bar. One, two and three, four and. One, two and three, four and. So when you see a dotted crotchet, if you think of the dot as being where the second beat starts, that sometimes helps. So it's one is the first note, two is where the dot is. The next note will be a, a half beat, so it'll be an and. So one, two, and three, four, and. The second way of extending the length of the note, and this happens fairly often, is by tying notes together. Tied notes often occurs when you need the length of a note to extend across a bar line. So in the first example, we've got a piece of music that's in three, four time. Now we've got a dotted minim, so the dotted minim lasts for three beats, and that takes the whole of that bar. But you can see that in the second bar, it's tied to a minim. So in other words, that first minim actually lasts for three plus two beats, so it lasts for a total of five beats. So in other words, one, two, three, one, two, so that's five beats. And if I put the crotchet on the end, we'd have one, two, three, one, two, three. Now if you look at the second line of music, you'll see that the, the last note in the first bar is a crotchet, but that again wants to extend over the bar line. It wants to extend to a minim. So in this case, we've got a crotchet, which lasts for one beat, tied to a minim that lasts for two beats. So that note is going to ring on for three beats. So that's going to sound like this. One and two, three, one, two, three and. All right, I hope you're finding this interesting. Uh, if you are, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the little bell icon and that way when I release more videos, you'll get notified of when they've been uploaded. As I said earlier, the musical note values can be thought of as a hierarchy. So just, just want to go through that hierarchy in two different forms. So you can see that at the top of the hierarchy, we have the semi-brief and a semi-brief lasts for four beats. One, two, three, four. Beneath the semi breve you have two minims. One, two, three, four. Beneath the minims, you have four crotchets. One, two, three, four. Beneath the crotchets, you have quavers. One and two and three and four and. And beneath the quavers, you have the semi-quavers, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. 
You can also think of the hierarchy in this form. Now don't forget, each of these bars has the same value in terms of the time that each of the bar lasts for. So this is another way of looking at the hierarchy. And I'll just play through this form for you. Semi-breathe. One, two, three, four. Minims. One, two, three, four. Crotchets. One, two, three, four. They're our basic unit, don't forget. Then into quavers. One and two and three and four and. And then into semi-quavers. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now the other thing to consider when thinking of music is that music isn't directly made up of sound. Oddly enough, it's also made up of periods of silence. So this is where there may be no music played at all. We call these periods of silence rests. And for every musical note value that we have, we also have a rest value that is equivalent. Now I won't play through these, but you can see that for every type of note, for a minim, for example, there's a minim rest, for semi-brief, there's a semi-brief rest, etc, etc. And these are all counted in exactly the same way as the musical notes themselves. Okay, so we've been through quite a lot so far. I think it's quite a good time to take a break. Um, please join me for part two, where we'll be looking at the stave and time signatures and key signatures and lots of other information that you'll find on the stave. Don't forget, please subscribe and hit the bell icon then I can let you know when I've uploaded other videos. And please add any comments into the comment section below. See you in part two.